Hello dear students. In today's lecture, we come to the main object of our study in this chapter, namely cyclic groups. In the last few lectures, we have uh, taken a slight detour and we have studied in detail what we mean by order of an element. So towards the end, we will require that concept. But for the moment, let's uh, go through the idea of a cyclic group. Now before I give you the definition, once again, I would like to look at an example. So let's consider the example of the finite group G containing the complex numbers 1 minus 1 I minus I. I is the imaginary unit and uh, the group operation is multiplication of complex numbers. So out here in this group, we have a very special element and uh, that is I and we will see very soon why that element is so special. So let's look at integral powers of this element. I raised to 1 is I. I square is minus 1. I cube is minus I. And I raised to 4 is equal to 1. So I, uh, the first power of I gives me this element. The second power of I gives me this element minus 1. The third power gives me the element minus I. And the fourth power gives me the element 1. So essentially this seems to be a very powerful element in the sense that when I take integral powers of this element, it generates all the elements of the group. So if I can find an element in a group which is such that it can generate all the elements of the group, then such an element will be called a generator of the group. So here we call this element I a generator of the group. So if by taking different integral powers of the element, if I manage to get all elements of the group, so that means I has the power within it to generate all the elements of the group, then I is said to be a generator of the group. And if in a group I find a generator, then that group is said to be cyclic. So we will say that G is a cyclic group and if this happens to be a generator, then this is the notation that we will use to indicate that G is a cyclic group with I as a generator. So we write G equal to angular brackets I and this notation will mean that G is a cyclic group with I as a generator. Okay. Uh, a natural question to ask is, are there any other generators in this group? Well, let's look at the element minus I and check whether minus I is also a generator. So let's consider integral powers of minus I. Minus I raised to 1 is minus I. Minus I square is the same as plus I square. So this will be minus 1. Minus I cube is the same as minus of I cube. So it will be plus I. And minus I raised to 4 is plus 1. So once again you will notice that we get 1, minus 1, I and minus y, I. So we do get all elements of the group by taking integral powers of minus I. Remember the emphasis is on all elements of the group. So we are looking for an element which has 100% power. Power to generate all the elements of the group. So minus I is also a generator of the group G. We can also write G is cyclic group generated by minus I. So a group will be called cyclic if it has at least 
one generator that means there should be at least one element in the group which will generate all the elements of the group in other words when i take integral powers of the element i should get all the elements of the group and from this example we see that a cyclic group can have more than one generator i is a generator for this group minus i is also a generator for this group uh, how about minus 1 let's check minus 1 raised to 1 is minus 1 minus 1 square is plus 1 i don't really need to take the next power because i know i'll get minus 1 and again minus 1 raised to 4 will be plus will be plus 1 so i will keep getting the elements minus 1 and plus 1 only that means the element minus 1 has the power to generate only two elements one and minus 1 i will not get the elements i and minus i by taking powers of minus 1 so in that sense minus 1 is not a generator because minus 1 is not 100% powerful Minus one can generate only two elements of the group, whereas a generator is an element which has hundred percent power. Means it should generate all the elements of the group. Therefore, uh, minus one is not a generator. What about plus one? One raised to one is one. One square is one. One cube is one, and so on. so actually one will only generate one element so in that sense uh, one is even weaker than minus 1 minus 1 at least had 50% power why do i say 50% because it has the capacity to generate two of the elements out of the four whereas the element one has the has only 25% power so if i'm looking for a generator i'm looking for an element which has 100% power in that sense identity will always be your weakest element because uh, powers of identity will only give you identity it will never give you any other element so whenever you are looking for a generator in a group unless of course your group is the trivial group containing only identity then of course identity will be a generator we'll talk about this again but if it is a non trivial group then whenever you are looking for a generator it is pointless to look at identity because in that sense identity is the weakest element and generator is going to be an element which is the strongest so you may or may not succeed in finding a generator if you manage to find a generator then that group is said to be cyclic so this example should help us understand the definition of a cyclic group better so now let us define a cyclic group let g be a group and element a belonging to g and element a belonging to g is called a generator of g it will be called a generator of g if uh, a can generate all elements of the group that means when i take integral powers of a different integral powers of a i will get all elements of the group this is one way of looking at it another way would be i can write every element as an integral power of the generator so if every element x in g can be expressed as a is to n for some integer n 
Now this power n is an integer. I am specifically using integer. Means the power could be positive. It could be negative. Or for that matter, it could be equal to 0. So we will say that an element A in a group is a generator of the group. If every element can be written as some integral power of the generator. And if there is an if there is a generator, if capital B has a generator, then we say that G is a cyclic group. And suppose that generator is A. We write G equal to angular brackets A. So when I use this notation, it is to be read as G is a cyclic group generated by an element A. So a group is said to be cyclic if it has a generator. Remember what is a generator? As I mentioned in the earlier example. Here I is this generator because different integral powers of I give me all elements of the group. Or if you look at it in a slightly different way. It is like in English you go from active voice to passive voice. It's like I did this or this was done by me. It is that kind of a subtle difference. So the same way. Notice that I can write 1 as i raised to 4. I can write minus 1 as i square. I can write i as i raised to 1. I can also write minus i as i raised to 3. So that way, uh, this is another way of looking at it. Every element in the group can be written as some integral power of i. And therefore, in general also, if I can find an element a in g for which every element can be written as a raised to some integer, then this element a will be called as a generator. And if a group has a generator, then that group is said to be cyclic. And this is the notation that we use for cyclic group. Some, uh, some books may also use round brackets instead of angular brackets. We also saw as in this example that generator need not be unique. For a cyclic group, you can have more than one generator. Another important point worth remembering over here is that when you are actually, of course, very soon we will be looking at examples of cyclic groups. And as I keep mentioning, most often in examples, your operation is going to be either multiplicative or additive. Means something like addition. And if your group operation is something like addition, then Instead of this, you should take n times a. Okay. So instead of an integral power of a, you must look at an integral multiple of a. So only if your group operation is addition, the only change you make is every element in G should be expressible as an integral multiple of a. Then a will be called a generator. And the group will be said to be cyclic. So that's all for this session. In the next class, we will see some examples of cyclic groups. Thank you.